Hello everyone. Today I want to share a video called The Fear of Death. You know, I may not have ever shared with you my goal in doing these videos and with sharing with you my understanding of the scripture. My goal is that you will begin to hear God for yourself and that you will begin to know the word of the Lord. Now, I've shared this scripture before, but I want to read it again. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, the high priest. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. This is prophetically talking about the church, where the church is today. The church is blind, just like Eli was blind at this time. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. That's interesting. And again, refers to this time. The lamp of God is not yet out, but almost. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. And then verse 7 says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So my goal in teaching today and every time I teach is that the word of the Lord will be revealed to you because it's important that each one of us have a revelation of the Word of God. If we don't have it, we are not going to be able to go on with God. We're not going to be able to escape the fear of death. Just lately, I've been studying this um, craze for artificial intelligence. And the mass movement toward the singularity and toward transhumanism. Doubtless you all have noticed the um, propaganda out there concerning sex robots. Uh, you've probably seen the um, video of Sophia who was granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia as a talking robot of course they have her head uncovered so that she still looks like a machine but they could easily have covered that up to make her look more human but at this point they're trying to make this acceptable to you the fact is they're trying to make this whole idea of man merging with machine acceptable now, it's become clear to me in the last few weeks that what we're seeing really is a fulfillment of the final kingdom that was prophesied by Daniel that there's going to be an attempt to marry iron with clay or machine with man. It's really a very hideous frightful, grotesque reality that we now live in. It's really unbelievable. Some of you have probably seen videos by some of these icons of the music industry like Beyonce or Beyonce, however you even say her name. Um, Gaga, Lady Gaga, Madonna, and others Taylor Swift, there's a, in these videos, 
they are depicting a merging of humanity with machines and it's really very ugly and it's very gross when you look at it and yet there's always the sexual innuendo in these videos as if this is a sexy thing it's not sexy it's not humanity it's not reality it's gross and it's ugly and yet that is what the world under the control of Satan is now pushing us into. So I share this today with a sense of urgency. Today, today, you know it's not always going to be called today. Turn to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. This is dealing with the rebellion at the time of Moses, a rebellion against God when they had seen the works and the miracles of God in a very profound way. And this warning is for us today. It's not always going to be called today. There's coming a time when Satan takes this world under his full control where the word today will have no relevance to us. Verse 15, look at it again. Hebrews 3.15 Today, if you hear his voice. That's a big if. That is a big if. Who do you know that hears the voice of God? Who do you know? Can you count yourself as one of those people who can actually hear the voice of God? How do you know? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. What do you do to ensure that you hear Christ's voice. Earlier in the book of Hebrews, the writer said this, chapter 2, verse 14, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, that's the children of God, he himself, that's speaking of Jesus, likewise partook of the same things, that through death he, Jesus, might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, or Satan. Jesus came to destroy the one who has the power of death, the one who has held people in bondage to death. And then going on. Jesus also came, verse 15, to deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. You know, <clears throat> lots of Christians even fear death. I remember speaking to a man <clears throat> two or three years ago who was facing imminent death, and I said to him that this may be the last time that I see him. And he looked up at me with eyes of fear. And I just thought to myself, and he, he is a Christian and has always represented himself as a Christian. But I thought to myself, here is a man who fears death. Why do you fear death, O oh Christian? I can tell you stories of myself. For example, um, 
being outside during a terrible thunderstorm with lightning crashing all around me and thinking one of those lightning bolts might get me and really saying to God, God, if you want me now, this is a good chance you can have me, you know, a lightning bolt right now, you know, and I'm in your presence. So Jesus came so that we would not fear death. But more than that, and now we're going to look at some scriptures that I hope will help you to hear the word of God, know the word of God, that the word of, and I pray that the word of God will be revealed to you. And I am asking that you yourself will pray that God will hear your prayer so that you too will know the word of God. Let's turn to John chapter six. Now in the recent series that I completed on the glorification or the rapture, as most people call it, the glorification of the sons of God. I talked about food and that the scriptural definition of food is doctrine. But the doctrine can be evil as well as good. What kind of food do you eat? Answer the question. What kind of food do you eat? Do you eat food watching those music videos of those harlots who are trying to seduce you into merging yourself with a machine? Is that the food you eat? Why do you watch that? Why do you listen to their music? What do you think you're doing? Do you think you will escape if you spend your time doing that? Well, let's look at what Jesus said about food. The Jews asked Jesus in John chapter 6, verse 30, what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? You know, what audacity. The day before this, Jesus had fed over 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And there were, there were 12 basketfuls of leftover food. And that itself is a prophetic story that I, I will get into someday. What sign do you give? What? What did I just do yesterday? They go on, what work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. You know, manna fell down from heaven. That was a big sign, wasn't it? As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. You know, we have 2,000 years of history of Jesus. He's a historical fact. He was not just a great teacher who lied about who he really was. He was God in the flesh. Verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Take those words to heart and don't be like the Jews now who grumbled, verse 41. They grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. What audacity does this man Jesus have to claim he is who he is? They said, is not this Jesus, 
the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Get it? Eat of this bread, me. I am the bread that came down from heaven, Jesus said. If you eat of this bread, if you eat of this food, the beginning of John said that Jesus was the word who became flesh. His word is our food. His doctrine is our food. If we eat of his word, if we eat of his doctrine, if we eat the truth, we will not die. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Do you notice that cannibalism now is a big deal? Satan always mimics and mocks Jesus. Is Jesus talking about cannibalism? Are we idiots? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Jesus is the word of God. He's talking spiritually. He is saying, you must eat my words. You must take my words into yourself, or else you will die. Do you have the fear of death? John chapter 8. The whole chapter is worth reading, but I want to cut to what I wanted to talk about today. The Jews answered him, verse 48, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see 
death. So many have the fear of death, and yet Jesus says if we keep his word, we will never see death. If we eat his word, which he tells us is his flesh and his blood, Jesus, the word of God, God himself became flesh. And so because of fear of death, what are people doing now? They're devising ways that they can live forever, that they can become immortal. And how are they going to do that? By plugging themselves into machines, by merging themselves with a machine, by marrying flesh with iron in fulfillment of Daniel, the prophet Daniel. And isn't this what Revelation chapter 9 is about? And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Maybe that's happened already. Chemtrails have now been pervading the earth for almost 20 years. Our skies are covered with this smoke. It cuts off the sun. Have you studied chemtrails at all? Do you understand what they're used for? And do you understand how they can even be used for this transhumanism agenda that's coming upon us? That there are people who have studied them and who say that there are nanobots, very small microscopic computers within the chemtrails that we all inhale and that are within all of our bodies now. And also blood. There's DNA and blood in these chemtrails. Of course, the chemtrails are used for other things like weather warfare, weather modification, uh, the false global warming agenda um, to cut off the sun. You know, that's how they're, they're really trying to sell it to people now as people are beginning to wake up to the chemtrails. But does Revelation 9, 2 speak of that? What is CERN doing? What are these colliders doing? I now learned this week that there are thousands of these colliders. I thought there was only one until a week or two ago. I thought it was CERN and that was it. But yet now I hear of a Fermi laboratory up in Illinois, I believe, uh, somehow linked to something in South Dakota. And, you know, what, what is going on? What, what is the smashing of atoms? Why are they doing this? The fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. Like the power of scorpions. You ever seen a curved tail of a scorpion? They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Do you have the seal of God on your forehead? Has the word of God been revealed to you? Have you passed from death to life? Or are you going to try to escape death by merging yourself with a machine? Verse 5. They, these locusts, were allowed to torment them, these people who don't have the seal of God, for five months, but not to kill them. Not to kill them, no, because they're seeking immortality. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. 
They try to escape death by merging with machine, and then they find, oh my God, this is not what I thought. Look at that. Does it look like a scorpion tail? Remember the movie Transcendence? Scorpion tails into the brain? Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today, if, if you hear his voice, it is not always going to be called today. It's time to seek the Word of God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, so that you do not download your soul to a machine and make it impossible for you to die. We have reached a critical time in history. You cannot play games. You cannot feed yourself on the food of Satan. Stop eating evil and learn to eat what is good. Learn to eat the Word of God, the truth of God, eternal truth. Amen.